Thank you to Alexander RHH for their generous donation on Patreon. Hello everyone, my name is Deckerlink, the trained unprofessional, and welcome to the very first episode of Wolfstar Sins in Paradise. Right off the bat, already loving the music on this title screen. It feels epic, it feels like I'm about to start something important, you know? CONTENT WARNING! The following demo game is a work in progress. All assets currently in use may not appear in the final draft. This game has no ESRB rating. It does contain adult content, which includes the following. Adult language, drug and alcohol use, homosexual content, sex, violence, and content not suitable, suitable for players under the age of 18. By playing this demo, you declare that you are at least 18 years of age. I am. Player discretion is advised. At last, our courageous adventures have tracked down the demon. The ruthless Dia Da Duh, what the fuck? Dagio Sega. Sega. He who has been the root of evil ever since the childhood. There's no place to hide, nowhere left to elude their grasp. So many have suffered at his paws for so many years. Now, tonight, in the final show, the final showdown of a battle that has spanned across time and worlds, is about to begin. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, did he fucking blink? Do we have blinking animations in this? Holy shit, he blinks. This automatically, you know, best game, best fucking game. Freeze! Don't move! This is Wolfstar, so I imagine he's the main character. You are Wolfstar, an alien known as a wolfkin on his home planet of... Tessair. You are a first-class detective and marksman. Holy sh... Ah, so sweet. So sweet. So sweet. Why did I say sweet? Where did I even see the word sweet? Ah, oh, cry. I'm nervous. I'm fucking nervous. Ah, so the great detectives finally figure out how to put two and two together. It's been, what, nearly 100 years now? To your credit, you have had me on the run more than once. Although now I see that walking would have been ample enough to keep a step ahead of, y of you two. Who knew it would take this long? After all, I was so generous leaving all those clues for you in order to bait you here. Oh god, who the hyper? <laughs> this is funny because the creator on Twitter is Hyper Wolfstar. Don't act like you wanted this to happen, Di Dagio. Dagio? 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 What the. Do you think it's a hard G or not? I wonder which one it is. Daggio, Daggio, Doggio. <laughs> this is Hyper. He is Wolfstar's best friend and most trusted ally. He is a wild berserker and master swordsman, and has kick ass wings to boot. That thing on his back isn't just for show. You know damn well that this time we're holding all the cards. The tables have turned and your sick little game has come to an end. Prepare yourself for a long overdue tail end kicking. Oh, I'm shaking with fear. Do you really think this game of ours is over? What a shame it would be if you were to stop my game right now. Especially since we're all so close to having our greatest desire come true. The one thing we've all wished for most. What do you mean by our greatest wish? You don't know anything about us or what we could want. The w only thing me and Hyper both wish is for you to finally get what's coming to you. Yeah! Absolutely nothing you can say, nothing you say can stop us now! Daggio picks up his nearby wine glass for a sip, then grins wickedly. I found a way home. What? Don't listen to him, Star. It's gonna, it's gotta be some kind of trick. It's no trick, my brutish former soldier. 
During World War II, hmm, this has been a while, a hundred years they say, I found the doorway but needed the key to open it. Now in mere minutes I'll have both the key and the doorway. We can finally return home, all of us. I can return us to Tessier. Home. To those of you fortunate enough to know what a home is, to know what it feels like, you are the fortunate ones. I envy you. Thank the stars above, I hope he's alright. Alright, we got two choices. We can either slap Hyper awake or let Hyper rest. Alright, we shall slap him, slap him awake. Rise and si shine, soldier! Smackadoo! Out! Hey, that hurt, Wolfstar! Welcome to the club, my head is killing me. Yeah, my head hurts too. Any chance you get the license plate of that bus that hit us? But our insurance is gonna skyrocket. Wolfstar walks away. Holy cow, what happened to our clothes? We gotta find out where the heck we are. Don't fall behind, Hyper. Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't want to lose sight of my behind now that it's impossible for me to cover up, huh? Hyper catches up with his friend. Very funny. Looks like I'll be perfecting my backhand today. Ha 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 ha. The desert is vast and eerily calm. An ocean of sand stretched out as far as the eye can see. All in all, this isn't a horrible place to be dumped out but naked. The weather is warm, but not uncomfortable or hostile. The sand beneath our paws feels soft. I'll, I admit, I kind of love the feeling. The sky is even a perfect blue. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how long do you think we've been wandering? About an hour. You want to stop and rest a bit? Nope, I'm not, I'm not hot or even a little bit thirsty yet. Wait a minute. What did you just say? I'm not hot or thirsty yet? How could a pair of seven foot tall wolfkin covered from head to paw in fur wandering the desert for an hour not be the slightest bit hot or thirsty? Maybe because there's no sun to make them hot or want water. What? You look up and realize Hyper is right. Everywhere above is pure blue, not a cloud in sight, or any signs of a sun being out either. There's definitely something wrong going on around here. Hey Star, what's that over there? A sudden gust of wind blows, revealing an object once hidden in the sand. Ooh, it's a door of some kind? S from seemingly out of thin air, a door has appeared. Where'd this come from? There's another door over- there's another door over there, too! You can see behind the doors, there's nothing there but more desert on the other side. Doesn't seem like there's any mechanism attached to it. It should be safe to open it. You think I should try to open it, Hyper? What the f- <laughs> Hyper is dancing to the music playing from the other side of the recently opened door. What'd you say, Star? You should check out what's on the other side. There's like a whole other world beyond these doors. Really, Hyper, you are the dumbest. What would've happened if those doors were some kind of trap? It's not like I could've t taken you to the hospital. You reach out for the glowing door handle, then hesitate. Come on, Wolfstar, I might as well open my door too. What am I waiting for? Could me and Hyper be dead? Is this strange place limbo? It has to be it. This space, in this space must be the in-between before the final resting place. We died fighting Daggio. You twitch with anger upon the realization. We're dead. But does that mean that we failed? This place doesn't seem like hell. It's far too pleasant for that. These doors are... these doors here... Could they be the manifestation of our final reward? Were we meant to find them because they were made for us? Right, of course Hyper's door would lead to some eternal rave party. Fate would 
deem that he deserves that kind of reward for all he's done. Does it mean we have to part ways now? After all that we've been through? I... I just don't know if I'm ready. Even after a lifetime. Dude, Earth to Wolfstar, hurry up and open the door already, man! You know what? For once, Hyper is right. This may be the end of our journey together, but I must know what lies beyond. After a lifetime of being a hero, giving everything I had for friends and family, what did I earn? Guess it's time to find out where my door leads, where my door leads in the afterlife. After what now? What are you talking about over there, Wolf Star? I said I'm opening the door now. Here it goes. With a great rumble, the heavy stone doors slowly open and a bright light washes over you. Oh my god! The fuck is that? <laughs> it's this. The fuck? Jesus Christ! Roar! Oh. You can hear it your damn self. Jesus. Nope, nope, gotta run. No weapons, no armor, no magic. Just no, no, more no, and fuck no. Hey, <laughs> glad you can make it to the pu- What the fuck is that? No time to explain, just run through the doorway now. There's the roar again. You push Hyper in first, then grab the door and jump through while shutting the doors. Oh, fuck! Shortly after you realized you may be dead, a mighty sandworm appeared and attacked. Thanks to your quick pause and impromptu thinking, you eluded the beast and saved Hyper just in time. The jaws of the sandworm were almost upon you at the very last moment before the door doors closed. Those doors now have vanished, gone back to wherever they first appeared from. You fall from the skies above, landing in a strange new world, a city like no other. That was way too close. Oh, dude, I was... I so wasn't ready for the interspace gymnastics today. How many times do I have to tell you, you have wings, you can fly? Uh, where did your wings go, Hyper? They faded away the moment you pushed me through the doors. This world must not have a moon or something, so they disappeared. Ah, oh, my back, that smart! I'm sorry, I really didn't intend to turn my best friend into street pizza. The fuck does that mean? Here, let me make, let me help you up. You help Hyper get up and rub his wound gently. What a day for you. Who else gets to wander, wander around, but who else gets to wander about butt naked in a desert all day or see giant worms half the size of my dick? How modest. How fucking modest. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're still here with me. For a moment I believed our adventures together had ended forever, friend. Wait, what? Why? What would make you think that? It'll take much more than a fall like that to end me. Getting used to, getting used as your trampling was almost enough, though. It's not like oh, that at all, Hyper. Don't you understand any of this? What's happened to us by now? You figure out what's going on around here? Any chance you know how we ended up in the desert? Well, no, not exactly. I don't really have any evidence to know exactly what's going on here. Do I tell him anyways? Uh, I'm gonna go with tell Hyper that you don't know what's really what ha uh, know what's going on because that seems to be slightly in the lead. You know what, Hyper? I'm ashamed of myself to admit this. No, I don't really know. I thought I had something too. That fall probably scrambled your brains. Uh, but dude, don't sweat it. Who cares, right? We're here now. That's all that really matters. The answer will come with time. Surprisingly deep wisdom coming from him. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter, as long as we're together. I can't believe after all this time we've spent together, all the hardships we've been forced to endure, that I still need to be reminded that of of that uh, reminded of that oh so simple truth between us. Hyper, your friendship has taught me so much. Thank you, my friend. Even in the afterlife, I feel like there's nothing we can't do. 
to get together? Dots? Really? Really? Where the fuck did that idiot go? You go to look for your friend, using your wolfkin senses to follow his scent. If your scent turns you on, you suffer a minus 20 to hide your arousal. Damn it. You follow Hyper's amazing scent, and it leads you to an alleyway. The big lug is lost and confused. Seeing him like this to keep, uh, seeing him like this helps to keep your emotions in check. You wouldn't want to give to have Hyper go all berserker rage, anyways. After all, you do know that feeling pain still exists in the afterlife. You lost, big guy. Yeah, I guess curiosity led me away from the party. You see a white rabbit or something? That would explain a lot, actually. No, I thought I saw a girl in the crowd giving me the come here stare. That figures. Hyper's true weakness still continues, even in death. Follow me. I'm sure we can find a better hangout spot somewhere less crowded, maybe. Oh, we got, uh... We got a we got someone talking to us. Whoa! I don't think you two deadbeats are going anywhere. Who said that? Show yourself as you wish. Holy shit! What the fuck is this? Welcome to the, my city, newly dead. They call me the tax man, and I've come to collect. Tax man. Now, now, detective. Let's not waste time going over the same information. In fact, let me answer your questions right now and in this order. Yes, you're both dead. Utterly dead. No, there's no place to go from here. You only have yourselves to blame for winding up down here. Never use doors unless you know where they're gonna take you. I'm certain another moment or two and the Golden Gates would have appeared to heroes of your... The taxman takes a long drag from his cigar, then releases a large puff of smoke into the air. Caliber 2. Such a pity. <laughs> Your asses are in my realm now. Welcome to the city of paradise, boys. <laughs> and you're just in time for tax day. I come by once every month to every citizen. I'm here now, so it must be time to pay. You mentioned coming to collect something. What exactly is it that you were, were, we're supposed to give you? We've only just arrived here in this realm of yours and have nothing but the skins we wear. The taxman takes another long drag from his cigar. It's really simple, chumps. He exhales the smoke, his eyes flare, and his hideous grin appears. Either the two of you, within the next hour, cough up a buck each off paradise currency, or you find a willing fellow deadbeat to fuck. You each owe me one or the other. What? What? We understand. Like hell we do, Star! We have an hour to pay up? You got it, detective. Failure means... He begins to fade away in a puff of green smoke. I get to reap your worthless little souls and devour them. Ha 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 ha! You've got to be fucking kidding me! He's a nutcase for certain. Did you feel the aura resonating from him? The overwhelming god status aura? Yeah. His cigar stunk too. I have a strong feeling that he wasn't joking about what he is, or what he's capable of. I don't think we have a choice. We gotta go through with his terms. Do we even have a chance of making any money all the way out here? We're so far away from anyone, who would hire us within an hour? This sucks! This really sucks! Come on, Hyper, I'm sure a good-looking stud like yourself won't have trouble with the women here. That's just the thing, dude. What are you talking about? Read my lips, Star. There are no women here. Oh, shit. That's gonna be a real problem. Oh, they're hugging. Oh, they're hugging and it's sad. Hyper grabs you in a bear hug and whines. Why me? What do I do? What can I do? 
Do we have time to race back to the party? We're really f we we're really far away. Even if we do that, what then? We whore ourselves out to the first couple of strangers we meet for a buck? There's no way that would work. I'm certain that desperation is universally unappealing, even in, a, in, even in the afterlife. There's just not enough time to accomplish either task. I don't know what to do. We've gotten out of worse situations than this before. I don't think there's gonna be a way to get out of this one, Star. Our immortal souls are on the line here. Damn it, Wolfstar, think! Find a way! You always find a way! My head is spinning wildly. I'm not about to become some whore. Even though I'm dead, I still have my pride. I don't know what to do. Unless... Hyper does smell really good right about now. Oh, wait, what are you saying, you pervert? He's your best friend! But... If he just pounced me already, this problem could be solved. Maybe I should let him decide? What do I do? This is the toughest choice of my entire afterlife. Tell Hyper that you and he should just go for it, or ask Hyper to decide what to do next. Okay guys, think about this before you just say something, okay? Well, the majority say, go for it. So, tell my hipper that you and he should just go for it. Oh, uh, Christ. God damn it, Hyper, let's just fucking get it over with. What? I can't believe it took something like death and a threatening godlike being to get through to me. All those wasted moments, every single opportunity in life I had with you, I backed down. Not anymore. We've gone through so much together, but never crossed the threshold. What's the big deal now that we're here on the other side, and no longer in a world that would judge us? I want you, Hyper. I don't want to lose you. Not now. Not like this. I never want to lose you again. It's not a hard choice, is it? I want us both to continue to exist. For once, let's just make this easy. For both of us, Hyper. Star, I... Size, you're right. I don't suppose there's any other way if we want to exist. I'm gonna... This is gonna... I'm gonna fucking get you plum. <laughs> let's do it. You enter a dimly lit alleyway nearby. The ground beneath you feels smooth, dry, and has recently and has been recently cleaned. Hyper lays down, propping himself partway up against a wall. He beckons you to come join him on the pavement. Around you, the city the noise of the city sounds distant, and the streets appear to be completely deserted. You'd never tell Hyper, but the prospect of get, getting caught having sex turns you on. Now, it's just you and your best friend. Free to touch and explore one another. Oh, he's all up on the screen now. Did that really just happen? I guess it must have. I'm cuddled up with my best friend and we're both covered in each other's sex candy. It's been well over an hour and the tax man hasn't returned to claim our souls. I guess we've paid up in time. Oh, Christ, you pat Hyper's rear, he holds you a little tighter. Mmm, your cinnamon rolls are the best, a Angie. What? Oh, he's asleep. Now he goes talking in his sleep again. Angie. That's right, Hyper's girlfriend when we were still alive. Really? You think I'm your girlfriend right now? What if he thinks I'm a giant cinnamon roll? It'd serve you right if I... To lick off all the frost. If you, if you, if I let you lick off all the frosting, Christ. <laughs> I'll just stay in bed all day, honey. If only Angie could see us now. I'm sure she'd kill me if I wasn't already dead. The wrath of a woman scorned, especially when that particular woman is a level 90 enchantress with a fairy from the fairy realm. You hear a familiar sound and gaze up at the clouds above. Fireworks. Wow. 
kind of want to. I kind of want you to see the show, Hyper. Maybe this won't be such a bad afterlife after all. Giant worms and psycho psychotic sex gods aside, I think I could get used to this. Suddenly, your reverie is interrupted by a strange voice with an Australian accent. Oh fuck! I don't know how to do an Australian accent. Oi, there you are! I can't fucking do an Australian accent, so I'm not even gonna bother. Huh? Good day, my name's Janice. We've been searching all over for you two ever since we saw you fall from the doorway. Uh, hey there. My name's Wolfstar. You're still naked and covered in jizz, but whatever. And his name is Hyper. Why are you looking for us? It's not every day you get new people from them fall from the skies around here. I know my cop is going to be wanting to meet you both. I'll go get him lickety split. Sorry to be rude, Janice, but anyway, you know or have anything around here we could use to clean ourselves up with? I really don't want to meet anyone looking like this. If Hyper were awake right now, I'm sure he'd agree with me too. Oi! Seems like you two got yourselves into a bit of st a sticky situation. Eh? Always nice to meet a fellow ridgy ditch tax-paying citizens like yourselves. <laughs> that fucking sucked. That's that's nice. Wow, I know the voice is bad, but that fucking sucked. God damn. Ouch, even? Okay, alright, I'm... Losing the will to live? <laughs> oh, but where are my manners? Of course I want to help you out. No, stop. Okay, you know, that's enough. That's enough. Here now, take this and use it. It's not much, but you can use it to wipe yourselves all nice. Janice tosses you the shirt off of his back. Now don't go running off anywhere. I'll be back in a jiffy with my cobber. I'm sure he'd love to meet ya. Janice leaves in a hurry. Oh, th thank you. Holy crap, he's hot. His muscle shirt smells great too. I feel guilty using it as a jizz rag. Hope laundromats exist in this city. Man, if all the men around here are like this guy, then this is really is paradise. Sorry, Hyper, at least I know that I'm gonna like it, going to like it around here. You wipe yourself and Hyper clean with Janice's shirt. Hmm, just in time. It looks like Janice is back with his friend. Hey, sleepyhead, wake up. We got visitors and they're friendly. Hmm, who's that? See, I told you they went, wouldn't up and run away with my shirt. You owe me my... Which, my, which means drinks are on your tab tonight, Alex. Oh, who the fuck? Yeah, yeah, okay. It's a pleasure to meet you both. My name is Alex. I'd first like to thank you both for not running off with my idiot friend's shirt. Clothes are considered to be a luxury here in paradise, and a muscle shirt like that is expensive. Clothes are hard to come by. Well, I guess I shouldn't feel bad about not having any. Although now I feel much worse about having used Janice's shirt to clean us off. I keep on trying to warn him about trusting strangers. Boy, can I relate with that. Looks like I was right about the men around here. So far, two for two on the total hottie scale. My eternal afterlife is gonna be sweet. And I keep trying to remind you about the goodness in old people. You still got some serious trust issues to work out, Mike. It's a pleasure to meet you both. I right, let's get out of this dumpy alleyway and find a comfy place to veg out. You want us to go hang out with you? With our junk hanging out like this? I'm already feeling too self-conscious to even show myself on screen right now. Ha! <laughs> Fourth wall humor! Jesus Christ! Even without any gear on, most places will invite you in. Our workplace especially won't mind. You guys are always welcome. Will you join us? Our job isn't far from here. Yeah, alright. Lead the way. What kind of work do you guys do anyways? Welcome to Pleasure Island, boys! This is great! Non-stop play. What did it say? 100% BFP what? Uh, Pride Bar. This is great! Ah, oh, crap. 
Not quite what you were expecting, Hyper. No, I was definitely expecting... I was definitely expecting something like this. Well, let's go inside, fellas. I'm sure Hugo is gonna want to meet you two. Hugo? Oh, it's a dance club. Oh, God, it's a dance club. Is that a naked bull in the background? Well, it's covered up, so I guess... That's good enough, let's just, just in case. Hey, you go, honey, we're home and we've made some new friends. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is this game you guys got me playing right now? Ha, <laughs> <laughs> Janice and Alex. Hey, thanks for finally showing up to work today, assholes. What the fuck are these two, your replacements? Okay, two hotties and one whale. <laughs> Jesus. I think I think everyone is covered up right now. So you can so you can see just just look at what I'm looking at here right now. Good god. He's a bit rough around the edges. I think I could work with that. Maybe. His big boy is hyper. And his cover is named Wolfstar. Nice to meet you, Hugo, sir. You're a monster. What'd you do, eat your guests? <laughs> hey, I like these guys. Why don't you boys make yourselves at home? Have a drink. We'll be putting the drinks on Alex's tap tonight, Hugo. Hell, have three drinks then. Hugo walks off, easily lifting up a couple of enormous black speakers and carrying one under each arm as he continues to work. I hate both of you so much right now. Holy crap, that dude is huge! I've been standing back here the whole time! Could you even see me, Wolfstar? Right this way, guys. He goes in a ripper mood! That's right, we wouldn't waste this moment of charity, and we shouldn't waste this moment of charity! Right, Alex? Please exercise some self-control with your drinking tonight. Your group gathers around the Pleasure Island Bar. That bartender looks too young to be working here. He's only wearing a vest, really? I'm sure I should feel ashamed of myself for checking out his package, too. Welcome to the Pleasure Island Bar, where we like to mix it up and make the world taste good. My name's Ricky, your faithful mixologist. So what'll it be, fellas? You see today's special menu with three different soft drinks. Uh, Black Wolf Bite, Wild Feral Whiskers, Lounge Lizard Lemonade. You get the feeling that everything about this place is animal themed, lucky us. Any suggestions, Janice? Bring us each one for everyone, Ricky. Coming right up. Better add an order of cheesy bread, too. It's not a good idea to drink without something in your stomach. After a short wait, Ricky returns with a food and drinks. Order up! Ah, yeah, cheesy bread, nice. You new guys are in for a real treat, enjoy! Look at that bread, nothing better than cheese bread fresh from the oven. No be shy guys, plenty of tucker to go around. Oh my god, this is so good. I think this might be heaven after all. This is literally the best food I've had in months. The flavor is like a well-composed symphony. I can taste each spice as if it was carefully arranged specifically for my taste buds. Fight back the tears, Wolfstar. Don't let them see you cry. As you wanted to say, but in reality... God damn, this is fucking great. Whoa, that's something I expected to hear me say. Everyone at the table enjoys a hearty laugh. Spending time here has helped you release the B-side. I kinda like it when you go wild, Star. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. You're having so much fun. But I forgot what's important. I need to get my head together. I got my whole afterlife to goof off later. For now, I need to start asking some important questions. Oh, we got a lot of questions here. So where do new guys like us find a place to live? I don't know how it works, but a strange phenomenon occurs in the first night of a newly dead's arrival. 
The key appears in your hands for me and Alex. The keys we had just so happened to be for the apartments across the street from here. What? That's nuts. Everything was fully furnished. Our kitchen had food, supplies, and brand new appliances. We even had computers and a top-of-the-line entertainment system, too. Only the closets were empty. Not a shred of clothing in the place, unless you count bathroom towels. So a key just appears, then? Do you know when this happens? It'll probably happen when you're feeling stuffed, most likely. Maybe you luck out and get a nice apartment, or even a house. We'd be glad to take you around sightseeing to see what place you might end up with. So a key will just appear in our hands? That's convenient. Can you tell me where you can get some clothes? When me and Alex first arrived, we were played naked too. We didn't get a cozy desert trail either. We There was a snowy valley in the dead of winter that we had to uh, traverse before finding this place. I could cut diamonds with my saucepans, which, if I recall, is exactly why you go hired me. Long story short, we got hired here and made money as dancers, then went clothes shopping. Oh, well, that makes sense. I guess most things work the same way as they did living on Earth. Wait, did they? he say Earth? That's not their home planet. The Earth planet was Saigon or whatever the hell it was called. I know it wasn't Saigon, but <laughs> it was it was something else. They didn't they didn't live on Earth. Maybe they lived on Earth, but they didn't. They weren't born there. There's a freaking egg size here, though. I don't know. Exy. Exy. Eh. Exy? Clothes are very expensive. Apparently, life is exactly the same here as it was on Earth. Yeah, no kidding, right? Time flies around here, boys. One minute you're a newly dead, and the next you're celebrating your 50 year anniversary. Alex winks at Janice, who offered a wide grin in response. What do we do if the tax man shows up again? You mean when the tax man shows up again? There's no doubt in my mind that you'll see him again. We all do at the end of every month. Honestly, though, he's not gonna worry about. He's nothing to worry about as long as you keep up with the sexual acts. Scrounging up and a decent amount of coin, though, is ludicrous. Uh, how do you know so much? Is it the same for everyone who lives here, or does it increase or decrease? Every month is 50 bucks, mate. Rate hasn't changed in over 20 years, as I recall it. You'd never catch me paying that kind of outrageous price out of pocket in 10 years' time, let alone in a single month. You're joking, right? How much? How much? $50 or 10 sexual acts with someone else a month. Not hard to accomplish, really, unless you want to pay with cash, then it's impossible. He's a right naughty god, but committing 10 sexual acts a month really isn't that hard. He can even be with the same copper, too. It's only $50. Getting $50 a month is next to impossible, though. Really? 50 doesn't seem like that much to me. Forget it, Mike. You have better odds finding that kind of cash on the streets in the middle of a thunderstorm on Christmas Day! Ha <laughs> ha! It's not uncommon to only make a small bit of pocket change after a full day's work around here, Hyper. I think it's best I've ever. I think the best I've ever done in a single month is fifteen dollars and fifty cents. I still can't believe your luck, Cobb. But my personal best is ten dollars and forty-two cents. Uh, Hyper, are you gonna be okay? You don't strike me as the gay type. That's because I'm not. Oh, well, that's not good. Poor Hyper. At least I'm here for you, buddy. Whenever you need me. Where do we find work? Ah, he said the four-letter word, Janice. You should be ashamed of yourself. Maybe I should tell Hugo that we're here to replace you two. Oh, my feels. That hurts, Wolfstar. Unfortunately, there's never any jobs that open up anywhere. There's never, there's never any jobs open anywhere. What? How's that possible? 
Simple fact of the matter is there isn't any dying going on around here. Every position has been filled for years. You can trust Alex. He keeps up with job listings around Paradise. Shortest page on any given news day is available for job openings. There's just no work out there for new deadbeats. I know we could try convince Ego to open up enrollment for you two and come work here with us. Hugo might be willing to open up a spot here. Couldn't hurt to have Janice try to work his charm at the old bull. Great, from first class detective to becoming a stripper at a gay bar. Well, I suppose there are worse things than that. I must admit that I've enjoyed being on stage before. Performing again could be fun, and shaking my tail on the afterlife sounds exciting, too. I think it's about time our boys hit the town, eh, Alex? We cover more ground if we split up. Besides, your sightseeing style conflicts with mine. I think that's a good idea. You okay with that, Hyper? Yeah, I've got no problem with that. Now just to uh, pick out the teams. Alright, I want to go out with Janice or Alex. <laughs> there was only two votes for Alex. And the rest was for Janice, so... Oh, boy. Somehow I knew you were gonna pick me. Get ready for my patent pending all seek two of paradise. Oh, you poor soul. Well, Hyper, let's go conquer the night. Let's leave me back here tomorrow, Avo. You expect me to be up by tomorrow afternoon? No promises, friends. Try not to have too much fun without me. Take care of my friend, Aussie dude. Alex and Hyper leave. <laughs> you guys left me with the fucking. God damn it. Finally got you all to myself. This would be Bonza. It's an amazing park you've just got to see. Lead the way, Janice. J. Anus. This is Fifth Street, over the famous Pledge Island Bar and Gentlemen's Club. It's a right smack in the middle of paradise, too. Most locals here just call it Center Point. There's lots to see and do, though. We've got much history to cover, too. Hope you like history, Wolfstar. Kidding me? I love history. It was my favorite subject in school. The more you get to tell about the city, the better, friend. That's the spirit too, right? We're gonna have a bonza time. Let's go, cutie. This tree is called Third Heaven. Named after the religious cosmology, cosmology itself. Third Heaven comes from Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Some bloke named Paul wrote a bit about it in the New Testament too. That's pretty interesting. Are there are other streets here named after religious things too? Follow me, Kaba, and find out more. This guy is full of energy. I really appreciate his enthusiasm. As you walk together, you look up to see a sign with the name of the next street you're approaching hanging from a traffic signal. A Vesta way. Does a Vesta mean something spiritual? All the Vesta is a collection of religious texts of the theology of Zor. What the fuck? Zoroastrianism. Zoroastrianism. Zoroast. What does that religion ori originate from? Early Persian, though, it falls under the realm of legends and myth. Mythology always got me excited. I love reading about heroes and monsters. You have any favorite mythological heroes? Hercules and Perseus or Hulk and Thor? I got a feeling saying Hulk and Thor will be an insult to him. <laughs> because he actually likes, like, mythology, shit like that, not comic books. Hercules and Perseus. I really like Hercules and Perseus. There was something admirable and tragic about each hero. I tried to be as determined as Herc and as clever as Perseus during my adventures with Hyper. Plus, in regards to Hercules, I love the fact that actors like Lou Ferrigno, Arnold Schwartz... Just Schwartz, apparently. Levine Sorbet and Diamond the Stone Johnson. Diamond the Stone Johnson have worn the hero mantle. All total hearties, right? Levine Sorbet was amazing, I'm telling in the television series, too. Nice to be around someone who appreciates the classics and yet can enjoy some modern media, too. No matter how silly they are, it's just a guilty pleasure. 
Damn right, we grown men should be should be ashamed of ourselves. Sometimes, though, you just gotta treat yourself, you know? Wolfstar, there's a lot more to you than good looks. I used to be a detective, too, you know. You serious? Yep, Detective Wolfstar, first class. I feel like I'm in the presence of greatness now. Right back at you, Janice. I really don't think you'd have so much in-depth information- I really didn't think you'd have so much in-depth information to share. You surprised me in a good way. Thanks, Star. It was good to be teaching again. Can the first-class detective guess which subjects I used to teach? Hmm, I'd say world history and possibly theology. Do right, Dean, on the both counts, mate. If I get too intense with this tour, I can dial it back a bit. Sometimes, when you're in the moment, things can get overwhelming, fathers. Oh, man, he's so close to me. The only thing overwhelming now is how good he smells. I don't care how long this lasts, I just want it to last. Wait a minute, we're holding hands? When did that happen? We're not too far now from our, la for our first rest stop. Let's keep going, detective. You don't have time to dwell on the hand-holding, as you are tugged forward almost at a running pace now. This is the Bifrost Bridge. Bifrost, from Thor. It gets its name from Norse mythology. Hey, I got it right. Bifrost is a burning rainbow bridge that, can, that stretches between Mid Midgard and Asgard, the realm of the gods. Midgard? Isn't that another word that means Earth? Ding ding, you are correct. Earth has many different names. My heart is racing, my head is swimming, why can't I get myself under control? Wait a minute, the alcohol must be kicking in, oh jeez, who knows how much proof, how much proof percentage those drinks were. Oh, he flexing now. Hey Janice, sorry to interrupt you during class, but what was in those drinks we had at the bar? Strong stuff, I'm kinda tipsy my, now myself. The park is coming up soon now, we can take a breather once we're there. We'll take it easy, no rush mate, just a short gingerly stroll from here. Right this way, the entrance to Eden Park. This is really well hidden. Eden Park gets its name from the fabled Garden of Eden. Paradise lost to all mortals because a snake convinced a woman to munch on knowledge, on knowledge tree fruit. Do you buy that theory at all? You know what, Star, it seems women, women got the so short end of the stick at the start of the nearly every civilization. No, I don't think a single sex is responsible for the downfall of mankind. Is it true that there are no women at all here in Paradise City? I've yet to see one of my 50 years of hanging around, and trust me, I've walked every inch of this big smoke more than once in that time. You've been dead for 50 years? Give or take a year. Took me some doing to get started. Took me some doing to start recording my exploits here in the afterlife. I kind of wish I'd started earlier. Alex and me got some good stories to tell. What's wrong, Star? Do you remember your own death? How it happened? Ah, the question that haunts everyone's minds around here eventually. No, I don't remember what happened at the exact time of my death. I can drum up a pretty good guess on what happened up to the moment of my passing, though. Could you tell me? It may shed some light on my own passing experience. Oh, say so why not? Let's go further inside the park first, though. I know this good spot would be perfect for personal reflection and convo like. Lead the way, friend. The two of you make your way through the park and off the beaten path to find a remarkable place within. Wow, this view is breathtaking. Thank you for showing me such a beautiful place, Janice. You're welcome. This spot is called Yggdrasil's Rest. Very few people know about it. Yggdrasil is an immense mythical tree that connects the nine worlds in North mythology. Norse mythology? I came up here feel at peace, like the rest of the world really doesn't matter. You and Janice take a seat and take in more of the view. Let's bring the others up here for a picnic sometime. I'm sure Hyper would love this place. 
I'm sure Alex wouldn't mind that at all. How about your question from earlier, Star? I'm really sorry if it's stepping over some boundaries, but this is really important to me and Hyper. Oh no, I can relate, I really do. There isn't a single soul here that hasn't done that can remember exactly how they knocked it. Call it a curse or some such power of this city. But when you arrive, the last moment of living is stripped away from your memory. Are you certain? It's just the final moment of your life that's gone? Yes, my case is a bit different from most. How so? Janice looks down, a bit forlorn while remembering. I knocked it in a hospital. Oh, I'm sorry, Janice. Look, if this is too hard to try to remember, I, I don't want you to feel bad on my account. Now, me and Alex have had this kind of conversation before. You get over it by telling the story a hundred times or so. To talking always helps with healing. Why were you in the hospital? I had cancer. For years, I didn't know about it until I had an episode that brought me to the hospital. I'm sorry, Janice. Yeah. Is that all the times I felt pain after my hiking adventures had ended? Was really my body trying to warn me about it? There were important warnings that I had ignored. Not like I could afford the medical expenses either on a substitute teacher's salary. You passed away in the hospital. How much of it do you remember? My last day on Earth was miserable. Felt so weak. Threw up anything I tried to eat and couldn't get out of bed the whole day. I did manage to contact my family the day I went in. They would have, they would have to catch a late night flight in order to come out to see me. My body gave out before any of them even could make it to visit me. They knocked in my bed sometime in the Arvo. Better than being eaten alive or tortured, I'll tell you. And just like that, Genesis' mood seemed to shift back. Yeah, dying sucks, but mate, what a life I lived. I've no regrets, Star. Wow, what an amazing guy. He really helped me out. Even in the afterlife, it's impossible to find it's possible to find friendship. Janice, thank you. I wish I could offer my story in return. Both Hyper and I have no recollection of anything that happened before we died. What do you mean? It's not the just it's not just the last moment of life that's missing. It's like hours are missing from my final memories. I can picture the scene in my mind, but then the story goes blank. I'm sure you'll figure it out. It's not to fight your thoughts when trying to remember. Think of it as inviting the answers to come to you. Inviting the answers to come to me. Thanks, Janice. I'll try that. Well, my RC2 is about halfway done. If you're feeling rested up, we can continue. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Where to next? Back towards the Bifrost Bridge entrance when we arrive, just beyond a little hill and a little piece of heaven. To a little piece of heaven. Janice gets close and holds out his hand. You grab hold of his hand and enjoy the warmth and strength of his paw. Little piece of heaven. Sounds great. Let's go. After a short walking distance, the two of you came across a two-story cafe shop. The waiter inside greets you and Janice chimes in asking if the upstairs seating is available. The two of you are escorted upstairs. No, this is a little piece of heaven. Stay, star. It's wonderful up here, Janice. I'm guessing this is one of your favorite places to hang out? Sure is. This part of the little cafe is known as Little Haven. Bit of a rubber necker trap, but the taco is, uh, but the taco served here is well worth it. I am a bit hungry after our walkabout. I f but I feel bad about not having any money to pay you back for the food earlier today already. Don't sweat it, none, cutie. You've got all eternity to repay me the three cents I'm spending for us to dine in. And I'm sure Alex isn't gonna hold you the two, the ten cents he spent at Pleasure Island earlier either. No, he would try to get the money back from you. The waiter comes up with fresh soup, salad, and bread. Janice even tips him a penny for the fast service. Thanks again for showing me around the city. Your tour is fun. 
Anytime, Stan. I'm glad you're having a good time. Are you blushing, Janice? Hey, Stan, you wouldn't want to spend the night with me tonight, would you? This food is really something. I've never been so... Wait, when did you... It's getting kind of late, and I don't like sleeping alone. Besides, I'm sure Alex would have your poor copper hyper up all around, helping out all night. I'm sure they're gambling away the rest of Alex's rent as we speak. There's gambling in this city, too? And you're probably right, if Alex is anything like Hyper. Well, they can take care of themselves. What do I do? Go sleep over with this mega hottie that clearly wants to jump my bones? Fuck, what's wrong with me? There's no choice here, really. Sure, I'll sleep over with you tonight, Janice. On one condition. In condition? Alright, what are your attempts, detective? That I get to sleep on the right side of the bed. Janice laughs. You've got yourself a dear star. The waiter comes out with the main course plates. My apologies. I I'm so sorry, sir. Any chance we can take this food to go? The waiter fetches some good to go containers and moments. The two of you are heading out to Janice's and Alex's place. Welcome to our little home. We're free to stop by anytime me and Alex are here. You took away the food from Little Haven and in, in, you put away the food from Little Haven in the fridge and quickly made your way up to the bedroom. And now, it's a nice place you got here, Janice. Do you and Alex live together? Yep, Alex's room is the master shagging room down the hall. Holy hell, how is this not the master bedroom? This bed is huge, and so is the room. Do you mind if I freshen up in the bathroom? My bathroom's on the second floor on the left. Sorry, I don't have a toothbrush, but you're welcome to use my mouthwash. You go to the restroom, but continue the conversation as you prepare yourself for bed. Sounds like you and Alex are close friends. Are you also a couple? <laughs> Not hardly, Star. Alex is like a brother to me. And we have bumped uglies on one behind on rent. We're friends with benefits. One benefit is I, I, I like is when we have an open relationship. I heard you mention earlier that you and Alex were celebrating 50 years of living here in paradise. Yeah, right, Copper. Tomorrow we'll mark our first 50 years together. After we got the hang of living here, the years just seem to fly on by. He returned to the room. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> uh... Those pants are probably gonna vanish at some point, but an ass is an ass. Asses are fine. You got anything in mind to celebrate? Janice lays down on the bed and beckons you to join him. You smile and take a moment to enjoy the sight of this muscled beast on top of the sheets. I'm thinking something more than a cake and card is in order. I'll probably give him a personal massage and a ton of that cheesy damper from work he likes so much. Reaches out his hand, clasping it with yours, and leads you to the right side of the bed. You get under the sheets, and he soon nuzzles up close against you. Sounds like a good idea. You slide your paws into Janice's tight jeans, slightly teasing his tail. Oh, <laughs> Look at this. Look at this fucking guy, look at him. He's so goddamn happy. Janice, you're such an amazing creature. So, the you two going to work tomorrow is just a formality at this point? You go will understand. Did you consider what me and Alex spoke about at the bar tonight? Would you like to come to work for us at Pleasure Island? Please just take me now. Hmm? I don't know if I've got what it takes to be a stripper. Reach down and give Janice's cork a playful grope. His dick responds to your teasing, slowly becoming rock hard. He's got an impressive length and is really thick. I'm going to love it here. What do you think? Will Star, you've got me sold on the idea. Oh, and uh, are they spooning? Aww, they're spooning. Aw, this is the cutest fucking thing. Look at this shit. Aww. That's cute. Thanks again for everything, Janice. And I'm really sorry for using your shirt as a jizz rag earlier. 
You're welcome, Star. Don't worry about this shit. I threw it in the wash. It'll be good as new in the morning. Janus puts his arms around you, hugging so nice and tightly, he yawns and closes his eyes. Thanks again for spending the night here with me. In High Wolf Star. Janus kisses your shoulder and promptly knocks out. In moments, you succumb to gentle slumber. That was a... That was a musical transition. <laughs> Even though the night is silent and filled with peace, within you... Uh, within you is a terrible struggle with restless thoughts that begin to swirl about in your mind. You awaken tense and alert. You stealthily get out of bed to think about what has happened to you. It's like hours are missing from my final memories. I can picture the scene in my mind, but then the story goes blank. I'm sure you'll figure it out. It's not to fight your thoughts when trying to remember. Think of it as inviting the answers to come to you. Inviting the answers to come to me. I've got to just let the answers come to me. I remember Daggio's office? Ah, there we go. They're all, hey, we can take the fucking plum off because everyone's clothed right now. Yay! What answers could I be missing? Dajo's computer was running. Dajo's window was open. Dajo uses science and magic. Or I'm done investigating this scene. Dajo uses science and magic. Dajo had some spiffy tech in his building. Nothing else was as advanced was as advanced as that glove of his, though. Maybe that was a typo. I've never seen anything like that like it before. It has some kind of aura attached to it, too. A weapon of science and magic, just the way Daggio likes it. But how did he get it? There's no way he had time to make such a thing. Definitely not while on the run from me and Hyper. I don't remember ever seeing it before that night, either. So where did Daggio hide it all this time? Ah, we get to try all of them. Sweet! Well, the other one was computer. Let's try that. I remember that Daggio's computer was up and running. There was a program running, and the screen was filled with data and strange calculations I didn't understand. There was also a planet on display. I wonder if that planet was my home, Tessayer. If I had to make a guess, Daggio was running some program in order to calculate the distance from Earth to Tessayer. Daggio's window was open. That's the only other option. I remember seeing Daggio's window was open. For a demon who has spent the last few years being on the run hidden away, I find it odd that he would carelessly leave the shades of his window drawn. And the rest of the office was in terrible condition, too. Wouldn't you hire someone to clean if you were incapable of doing so yourself? It really smelled bad in that office, too. Like, real bad. Like, aired out cigarettes or weed or some such crap. Has Daji always been a smoker? Well, we've tried everything else. I'm done investigating this scene. Ha ha ha. I feel like I've been going over the same ground again and again for the past hour. Inviting the answers to come to me. What a load. Inviting the answers. Wait a moment. Ah, oh, we're back. I can't believe I missed that. The glasses of wine. There were three of them. Dajo had his wine glass near the computer but there were two other glasses in the room. The cigarette smell was definitely coming from within that office too. Daggio doesn't smoke, but whatever guests he had invited there recently do. We must have been ambushed. Now if only I could figure out who. Looks like some more investigating is needed. We definitely made some progress tonight though. Thanks again, Janice. You don't know how much you helped me out tonight. Mmm, cinnamon rolls and sable, Ricky. Everyone's dreaming of cinnamon rolls. That's two dreams in a row about cinnamon rolls. Hmm. I wonder if cinnamon rolls are the key. Janice is still asleep, and it looks like he and Hyper have something in common. Sweet dreams, Janice. Make sure to put on Alex's tab, too. <laughs> Chapter 1 choices. 
Ah. Uh, well, we, we finished the prologue, I guess. Thank you all very much for joining me on, on the next episode. We'll, f we'll have fi hopefully figured out what we're going to do. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I have been the trained unprofessional. Speaking for the voices in my head when I say until next time, fare thee well. Bye, everyone.